Welcome to our conversation, where we strive to provide you with valuable insights into health and diseases. Today's video is all about understanding disease classifications and their significance in healthcare. But before we begin, let's set the context. Disclaimer, this is an educational video prepared by physicians with the intention of understanding the complexities of health and diseases. It is not intended to criticize or hurt any person, company, or segment of the community. The discussions in this video are backed by sound scientific evidence, which can be referred to in the literature for better understanding. Our focus is on bridging the gap between patients, healthcare providers, and the common man, as understanding diseases often gets lost in translation in the current popular media culture. Today, we delve into the topic of disease classification as it plays a crucial role in comprehending the essence of diseases for different individuals involved in their treatment. Diseases are broadly classified into three categories, general classification, patient classification, and physician's classification. Let's begin with the most widely used classification of diseases, known as the general classification. This classification system categorizes diseases based on various aspects, such as topography, anatomy, physiology, pathology, etiology, juristic factors, epidemiology, and statistics. However, it's important to note that this classification is purely academic and has limited practical significance. Moving on to patient classification, which focuses on understanding diseases from the patient's perspective. It involves categorizing diseases into four main types, infectious diseases, genetic diseases, metabolic diseases, and external diseases. Infectious diseases are caused by microorganisms such as viruses, bacteria, fungi, and protozoa. These pathogens invade the body, multiply, and cause various diseases of varying severity. The mode of transmission can be through direct contact, fomites, airborne particles, ingestion, or vectors. Treatment depends on the type, severity, and duration of the infection, ranging from self-limiting to life-threatening conditions. Prevention and clarity about disease prognosis are vital in infectious diseases. Genetic diseases are inherited conditions that can be passed down from parents or ancestors. They are classified into three types, single gene diseases, chromosomal modification diseases, and multifactorial diseases. Each type has distinct characteristics and implications. Understanding the genetic component helps in better managing these diseases, with multifactorial diseases often benefiting from modifiable interventions. Metabolic diseases result from imbalances in the body's homeostatic mechanisms and often involve hormonal or metabolic dysfunctions. One prevalent metabolic disease is metabolic syndrome, which increases the risk of heart disease, diabetes mellitus, stroke, and hormonal imbalances. However, lifestyle interventions, such as modifications in nutrition, physical activity, sleep, and stress management, can effectively treat and reverse many metabolic diseases. External diseases are conditions influenced by environmental factors and manifest in individuals due to constant exposure to irritants. For example, occupational diseases arise from prolonged exposure to specific irritants, while lifestyle diseases like diabetes mellitus can be influenced by environmental factors such as diet and physical activity. These diseases often have a genetic component, but environmental factors play a significant role. Now let's explore physician classification, which is a dynamic process that helps doctors understand and anticipate the disease process. Physicians consider factors such as the severity of illness, duration of the disease, response to treatment, and scope of the disease. This classification aids in determining the appropriate treatment approach and patient care guidelines. Duration refers to the amount of time or a particular time interval associated with a disease. Here are some important points regarding disease duration. 1. Emergent disease. An emergent disease is a condition that, if left untreated, can lead to impending death or loss of function. Immediate medical intervention is crucial to prevent severe consequences. 2. Acute disease. An acute disease is a short-lived condition that may require medical attention for symptom relief. The duration and course of the disease depend on its nature and severity. After the acute phase, the disease may resolve completely or progress to a different stage. 3. Chronic disease. A chronic disease lasts for an extended period, 
typically at least six months. It may persist constantly or go into remission, with intermittent relapses. Chronic diseases can be stable, where the condition does not worsen, or progressive, where the disease gradually worsens over time. While some chronic diseases can be cured or reversed by addressing the underlying cause, most can be managed to bring symptomatic relief, even if a permanent cure is not possible. For flare-up, a flare-up refers to the recurrence or onset of more severe symptoms. It often occurs as an acute exacerbation of an already existing chronic disease or a previously dormant disease becoming symptomatic under certain circumstances. Flare-ups may require additional medical attention or changes in treatment. 5. Refractory disease. A refractory disease is a condition that resists treatment, especially when an individual case shows greater resistance compared to what is typical for that specific disease. It poses challenges in finding effective treatment options and requires specialized approaches. 6. Progressive disease. A progressive disease follows a natural course of worsening over time, potentially leading to death, serious debility, or organ failure. Some progressive diseases are chronic, and many are degenerative or autoimmune in nature. In contrast, stable or static diseases do not improve or worsen significantly over time. 7. Cure and remission. A cure signifies the end of a medical condition, either through successful treatment or spontaneous recovery. Remission refers to the disappearance of symptoms, either temporarily or indefinitely. Complete remission is the optimal outcome for incurable diseases, indicating the absence of detectable signs or symptoms. Understanding disease duration helps healthcare providers and patients assess the trajectory of the condition, make treatment decisions, and set realistic expectations for management and outcomes. One important aspect to grasp is the distinction between various commonly used terms in healthcare. By clarifying these terms, patients can better comprehend their meaning and, more importantly, define their role in managing the disease. 1. Treatment. Treatment refers to a range of interventions provided by the healthcare system to control a disease, alleviate its symptoms, or resolve it altogether. Treatments can include pharmaceutical or molecule-based therapies, surgical procedures, radiation therapy, chemotherapy, or lifestyle modifications. 2. Cure. A disease is considered cured if the treatment eliminates it entirely and it is not expected to return under normal circumstances. For example, a child who recovers from measles is considered cured, as their immune system develops resistance to the measles virus after the infection. However, it's worth noting that in rare cases, a previously cured disease may present late complications if the body's immune system becomes compromised by other factors. 3. Remission. Remission refers to the temporary disappearance of symptoms due to treatment. This commonly occurs in incurable diseases such as certain types of cancer or autoimmune conditions. Achieving complete remission is often the desired outcome for managing these conditions. Fourth, relapse. Relapse occurs when a disease reappears symptomatically, either clinically or diagnostically, after a period of remission. Relapses typically happen after a phase of improvement, leading to the recurrence or worsening of symptoms. 5. Disease modification. Disease modification involves treatments or interventions that affect the underlying pathophysiology of the disease, resulting in a beneficial outcome. Disease modifying agents, such as steroids or monoclonal antibodies, are used in autoimmune conditions like rheumatoid arthritis and psoriasis. Emerging evidence suggests that interventions like prebiotics and probiotics can play a role in disease modification for conditions such as inflammatory bowel diseases. 6. Reversal of disease. Reversal of disease aims to restore normal health by removing the cause of the disease. This approach assumes that the damage is not irreversible or due to a genetic predisposition. Hypertension and type 2 diabetes mellitus are examples of diseases that can be reversed through sustainable lifestyle interventions, often falling under the domain of lifestyle medicine. Understanding these definitions provides a foundation for comprehending disease management and treatment. Now, let's illustrate the importance of disease classification and the physician's thought process through an example. One common symptom encountered across various medical departments is shortness of breath. Patients with this symptom may present to different units in the hospital, such as cardiology, respiratory medicine, pediatrics, internal medicine, ENT, gastroenterology, 
psychiatry, infectious diseases, the emergency department, or even the labor room. Although they experience the same symptom, their triage into specific units depends on individual and disease characteristics. When a patient arrives at the emergency department with shortness of breath, it could be due to potentially life-threatening conditions, such as pneumothorax, air in the thorax, or pulmonary embolism, blood clot in the lung circulation. Prompt intervention is essential in these cases. On the other hand, a heart patient may experience acute breathlessness due to pulmonary edema, fluid accumulation in the lungs, necessitating inpatient admission. Shortness of breath can also result from a respiratory infection progressing to pneumonia, which requires antibiotic treatment and possibly hospital admission based on its severity. In chronic smokers, it may be attributed to chronic bronchitis or a long-standing tuberculous lung infection. Seasonal allergic bronchitis, often referred to as allergic asthma, can also cause shortness of breath. In these cases, the appropriate specialist would be a pulmonologist or an allergist. Now, let's consider a different scenario. A patient experiencing shortness of breath and chest pain may be directed to the cardiology department. Cardiac causes such as angina, reduced blood flow to the heart, heart failure, or arrhythmias can manifest with similar symptoms. The cardiology team would conduct tests like an electrocardiogram, ECG, echocardiogram, or stress test to determine the underlying cause and guide appropriate treatment. Additionally, psychological factors like anxiety or panic attacks can manifest as shortness of breath. In such cases, a psychiatrist or a psychologist may be involved to assess and manage the patient's mental health. As you can see, the same symptom can be associated with different diseases and the course of action depends on the specific context and the medical expertise required to address the underlying cause. Accurate disease classification is essential for optimal patient care, as it allows healthcare professionals to determine appropriate diagnostic tests, treatment plans, and referrals to the appropriate specialists. By understanding disease classification and terminology, patients and their loved ones can actively participate in their healthcare journey, ask relevant questions, and make informed decisions. This knowledge empowers patients to collaborate effectively with their healthcare providers and contributes to improved outcomes and overall well-being. That's all the time we have for today's episode. Thank you for joining us. We hope this discussion has shed light on the importance of disease classification and terminology. Remember, knowledge is key to navigating the healthcare system and playing an active role in your own health. Stay informed, stay healthy, and see you next time.